Welcome to Throwback Thursday. Yeah, Rio Bravo. I know, I know. An odd choice maybe to some of you, but John Wayne's birthday this month, his anniversary is passing soon. It's just been on my mind. I've got two or three films I just haven't watched in a long time. The Searchers is also at the top of that list. Like, I just want to get a few of these sort of like revisited and kind of have my thoughts and opinions sort of like documented and you know, kind of curious on how they kind of evolve over time because it's a great film and I'm just, you know, interested to see what you guys think as well, because I grew up on John Wayne being this incredible icon, Dean Martin having this sort of like special place, my mom and grandma and my aunt and different family members just love him and, and Ricky Nelson as well. Kind of like a, a knockoff Elvis uh, during that era, by the way, but the film itself, Howard Hawks is just such a great Great job. One of the things I think that struck me the most on rewatching this was that this film was made with like a little over a million dollars. It's a very small scale, right? There's not a lot of set pieces, right? They have a saloon, a jail, the street, you know, they blow up a, you know, a home at the end of the film and things like that. But it's not like you need to have massive scale to do a great film. And sometimes we think of these Westerns because of the scale, long sweeping cinematic shots across a, a prairie and different, you know, tons of extras and things like that. And sure, there's some horses and extras and things like that. But let's be honest, a lot of stuff just being recycled through studios are just reusing things. And the film in its simplicity is just one of John Wayne's favorite. They revisit the film, obviously, with uh, sort of remakes that they do later on. Rio Lobro is the, clearly the obvious one. I think El, El Dorado as well. Richard uh, Robert Mitchum's in that one. And I think what I like about the film is just this concept of this um, alpha protagonist meant to do good no matter what. Like in some ways, the film doesn't offer you a whole lot of like story arc for the main character, really, right? Other than like the love interest elements. I mean, how much different is john wayne's character from the beginning to the end i mean how great of a performance is it and he john wayne's famous for saying you know i don't act i just react and this film really does showcase that there are scenes where um well the love interest is angie Dick dickinson yeah the famous angie dickinson um and she's just so beautiful it's it's even hard to see her at first it's like you just can't get it she's just stunning there's scenes where she's just ranting and raving and answering his, her own questions and just and she talked about talking too much and but him responding is so good. He's he's so talented in changing the demeanor of this character. You know, John John T. Chance. He's the sheriff, right? And the setup is pretty simple, right? You have a you know throwdown that happens in a in a bar, and the saloon goes sideways. Uh, the town drunk is dude, who's played by uh, Dean Martin, and basically an innocent man gets shot. And they capture the guy, throw him in the throw him in the jail, and wait for the uh, marshals to come but meanwhile you know his friend comes to town and uh, they offer up different people they meet we get introduced to uh, ricky nelson's character who is uh, colorado and he's like you know young kid he's like it's kind of like uh you know quick draw kid basically and uh angie dickens's character feathers kind of plays uh it's kind of played off as like, is she, a, she the bad girl or not? Because she's like the widow of like a gambler who's a cheat. So she's kind of wanted, but not really wanted. She's trying to make a good good life for herself now. And she obviously has the hot for John Wayne's character. So all of this stuff is very simple. And yet at the same time, because the dialogue and the characters are so well done. Oh, by the way, I don't want to sell short Walter Brennan's character. Walter Brennan plays Stumpy. He's comic relief. He plays like a cripple. And he basically is usually just left at the jail on uh, guard duty. But there's a great scene where he, you know, he almost shoots and kills Dean Martin's character. And then, of course, that comes into a, like a great callback later in the movie. So this wasn't just played for a gag early in the film or a way to mock Stumpy. It's actually a plot point that the dude uses later on. Now, I will say this of, of all of it. And, I, and I'm not trying to bag on John Wayne's performance. Please don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't consider it nearly as impressive as Dean Martin's. I would never have gone into this film or did I think about this film as a way of showcasing Dean Martin's acting chops. I'm not sure I consider him a great actor, but I can say this. 
it's not it's not even just a uh, you know he's playing you know the drinker he's playing dino right he's playing mr cool it's he is really really impressive in this film there are some scenes and some emotions i think he does not i don't i don't think the legacy of ria bravo props up dean martin's performance enough it, it really really is good uh let's see what else can i say about the film i i can say that Howard Hawks really knows how to really bring to life the larger than life actors of that generation. Like you didn't need to have a lot of pomp and circumstance. You can just let these performers go. They know their job. They know what they're supposed to do. They're immersed in these characters. Everything is believable. Everything is believable. You never, ever feel like you're watching actors act. You just, you feel the characters are real. It's just done. It's just done. done for, but by far, it's one of the strongest elements of the story. Not a lot of action. There's a few sequences before you get to that final scene. I will say of the, of the complaints, if I had a complaint, well, the music and the score, I'm not a big fan of the score. The score just seems out of place. It just doesn't age well. Like, I don't know exactly how to describe why the score doesn't work for me, but there's just, there's, there are moments where I'm just kind of like the music is not matching or doesn't feel like the tone fits it quite right. Like it's just off a little bit, right? And then I think Stumpy's jokes and gags and kind of being comic relief gets overdone, especially at the end where you're in the middle of this tension and this fight. It's not done well, like it's supposed to like de-escalate the moment. It's actually like kind of a distraction. Um, he's great. He has a nice heroic moment, I think, at the end as well. And some of it's played for gags really well. Um, and Walter Brennan is it's not the problem. It's just just the way that those it's just the timing of some of those kinds of things. But this is a really, really solid film. I don't know that I consider this among, um, it's definitely among my favorite uh, John Wayne films. If, if I have to list five, he's Rio Bravo is definitely on that list. Uh, I don't know if it's on my top of my Western lists, but I'm not going to say it's not either. I would have to kind of redo, and I've been doing some rewatch stuff, been kind of trying to catch up and do a little bit, but I had not rewatched this in a while, popped up, and I was like, oh, yeah, let me rewatch that. So I love your thoughts. Where are you on Westerns? Where are you on Rio Bravo, John Wayne movies? Um, and have you seen something like this recently? Maybe you've never seen it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on watching something like this for the first time. You know, it's considered one of the best Westerns of all time. I don't, my top three is Unforgiven, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, and Tombstone. But the other dollar films are kind of like my four and five. So, it's hard because I want to rewatch Searchers because I Searchers has kind of like been my favorite. But then as I thought about that, I don't think I've watched this. Yeah, Lee, definitely not in the last decade. It's been a long time since I've seen it. So I'm just I'm just interested to see where I'm at on that um, kind of like that list of, you know, what what holds up. And kind of, you know, as we change, what else changes, right? Because I haven't rewatched Shane. I haven't rewatched High Noon. I got Red River, Wild Bunch. Um, so stuff like that. I just wanted to really kind of just revisit some of these films, um, and give you give you my thoughts and reactions, kind of put a pin in it. Um, and Howard Hawks, I need to do another Howard Hawks film. He's done. He's he's really one of those, again, silent film into talkies, uh, foundation creating great uh uh directors of all time i mean you can't find a director tarantino scorsese carpenter all of them are going to point to you know hawks as being inspirational in their career because he's just he is he really really has his finger on how to use this media to its fullest how to create interesting characters get the best thing out of um you know directors those kinds of things and some of the stuff that he's accomplished there's just great stuff. I don't know. I don't want to say. I mean, it, yeah. So anyway, um, by the way, he did. He did kind of like. I don't think he got credit for it, right? But he did kind of co-wrote the um, the original thing from Another World. By the way, so that's the Carpenter reference that you know you hear Carpenter going on and on and on about Howard Hawks, and that's part of the reason why he just really got it. So that's my thought on on Rio Bravo. Just really had a good time watching it again. Definitely a fun film to kind of sit through. It does, you don't have to like, you know, it's not like this is a complicated film that can't, you can't be doing something on your laptop and have it on and then just kind of look up for some scenes, have some good laughs, some of the great dialogue. Cause some of the dialogue is great. Like there's a scene where 
because uh, the dude has left, right? He two year hiatus of being a drunk, and he finds out that John Wayne's character has kept all of his clothes, and he just says something like, to paraphrase, right? Something like, "Well, I kept them. I was waiting for you to be, uh, you know, ready to grow back, grow into them. Like you're, you, you know, you you've kind of fallen away, but when you're ready and righteous and want to do right again, the clothes are there for you to kind of walk back into. That element of that dialogue that comes up in a couple different ways is fantastic." It's just done perfectly. So anyway, that's my take on it. That's Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Actually, today, less of today, I'm not sure I'm going to get to another Throwback Thursday, but if I do anything else, it may just be some clips or some shorts and something like that. So hang with me. Uh, tons of other stuff coming. I appreciate you guys so much. Hang out. I'm Hops. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm not playing.